With The Acolytes episode 4, Lucasfilm doubles down on more bad writing, more identity politics in their new fake Star Wars show, and this is going to be my critique of this episode. Not surprisingly, it does not get any better with episode 4. There's just a lot more bad writing there, a lot more plot holes, inconsistent story, badly written characters, and a lot more cringe inducing moments. There's gonna be spoilers in this review before I go any further, just to let you know. So they bring in, and it's proven in the credits here of this episode, they bring in Kiaru Mundi from the prequels. Uh, and they bring him in here. But it doesn't look like they did their research on when Kiari Mundi's lifespan took place in relation to the timeline of the movies and the stories in those movies. And that's because Kiari Mundi is not even born, was not even supposed to be alive during the time that this show takes place, 100 years before The Phantom Menace. Kiari Mundi was born about 93 years before the Battle of Yavin. That means that he's supposed to be around 57 years old in The Phantom Menace. That does not make any sense with the timeline here. And the only reason that they were trying to do this because they were trying to give a middle finger to the fans by disrespecting and tarnishing George Lucas's canon and using the guy from the Phantom Menace that said, but the Sith have been extinct for a millennia. And by using him, she was trying to give a middle finger and saying, hey, look, I'm gonna use the guy to decanonize that canon and change the canon to my canon to this new Disney woke agenda, Leslie Helen canon in her show and she felt miserably because he's not even supposed to be alive and in doing so she decanonized her own show from this canon she was trying to be a part of. So there's a moment when Kiari Mundi tells everybody we need to report this to the Jedi Council which is where Yoda is part of and this BITCH right here Leslie Helen's girlfriend the actress here who was playing Vanestra the Jedi I think it's a Jedi Master. She says, no, we can't tell the Jedi Head Council. We have to keep it secret. They're going to report it to the Senate and we're going to get into more trouble and our image is going to be tainted and whatever. And it's just really stupid. And also the Jedi High Council will never go to the Senate for a matter like this, which is very much more of an internal issue within the Jedi. It's not affecting any Republic systems or about to cause a whole war or have anything to do with any political conflicts. So is this is just Leslie Hanlon putting herself in a corner with more bad writing, trying to explain the things. So in one moment, she's trying to give the middle finger and decanonize what was said in The Phantom Menace about the Sith. And another moment, she's trying to protect herself and her canon and continuity by keeping it secret and trying to reinforce the idea that years later in the prequels, none of this was mentioned because it was kept secret. It, the whole thing is just bonkers. It's just really bad writing, inconsistent, hypocritical writing on both sides. And it just shows that they don't know how to have a coherent story here that develops the story and actually adds to the value of the prequels and the original trilogy as well. So Vanestra should go to the High Council and report this, but she's not because it is she's being written to say no to hide the flaws in the writing that Leslie Hanlon put here. So they also couldn't help themselves here by finally adding pronouns in this fake Star Wars universe that they have here and adding it to this uh, hamster looking alien character. And there's a moment here where like she's like, what is that thing or what is what is he or they? And it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe they actually did this. And they're doing it to like this hamster looking alien character. And it's just all it's all just trash and insanity. We have some more awkward dialogue here and moments. Uh, the writers thinking they're clever with some little like fortune cookie sayings that these characters say, but it's all badly written and it comes off as disingenuous. So suddenly out of nowhere, May here, the evil twin sister has a change of heart when a of like basically saying that she's going to turn herself over to the Jedi because her sister's now in the picture, everything changes. And only a scene before, she was basically saying this. And if I don't do it, they'll kill me. 12 seconds later. I don't need to do this anymore. I don't need to kill a Jedi without a weapon. I don't need to keep this deal. What? 
Osha being alive changes everything. What I'm going to do is surrender myself to Kalnaka and then turn myself into the Jedi. No. This is not how you write characters. This is not how you write a story. Where is the conflict and dilemma for her to have gone through this change? There should have been multiple scenes where she's struggling with her conscience. The, the previous scene, she was so determined to go fight and kill this Wookiee and afraid that her master was going to kill her. And now suddenly she says, you know what? I'm not going to do this. Uh, Osho's back in the picture. I'm going to turn myself into the Jedi. Um, the, I'm going to be a good guy now. And they do this for a reason. It's almost like virtue signaling they can't have the diverse characters here inclusive characters here be the villains they have that reserve for the straight white males and it's all just a bunch of garbage trash writing that's further destroying this franchise so not much else happens in this episode and this episode was just not a lot of stuff happens a lot of walking going to this spot where the wookie went and i guess they find each other at the very end that's all the episode is they all kind of meet up at the very end the the Wookiee here Jedi gets killed and we find out it's this dark side Sith Lord uh character here that's the master of Ma May and this guy supposedly is uh powerful enough to blast and we're gonna see right here he's powerful enough with just one force push to blast away all the Jedi right here in one push and is he supposed to be as powerful as Plague is or as Palpatine and Sidious was? That's quite a bit of power and a little bit um, over-exaggerated. And I guess we're going to see what the story is. Regardless of what they're trying to do with the story, they're trying to match it to whatever George Lucas's continuity is and canon with our Plagueis and Palpatine. And if they want to try to make this guy connected to them or as powerful as them and he's a new guy or he's... There's even rumors that he might be an early version of a Knight of Ren and that sort of thing or a different kind of dark side user or maybe he is a Sith Lord that wasn't mentioned. The whole thing is basically canon breaking. It's the, the bad writing doesn't help. The woke agenda crap doesn't help at all. It makes it even worse. And the whole thing is just a pile of crap. This is not Star Wars. This is not what we Star Wars fans one from our Star Wars. We don't want these kind of stories that are being shoved down our throat with these political agendas, with badly written characters, cringe-inducing moments, and uh, a story that is basically kind of a retread of better stories that we've seen with like the Dark Plagueis novel and other EU stories and other stuff that we've always wanted to see. But when you give this much amount of money with this budget, $180 million, to this person, Leslie Headland, under Dave Filoni, who's also responsible for this crap, you have this kind of stuff coming out. And it's only going to get worse. I mean, episode 3 was basically the burial of this franchise here. But it, they're just going to dig the hole even deeper with the next episodes. So that's going to be my review. Let me know what you think. Hit that like button if you like this video. In the meantime, I'll see you guys later.